And right. it's important to know where a thought comes from because it's important to know the whole thought. The problem that we're seeing with the, de the deconstruction of liberal education, which we talked about mm -hmm. in our early episodes, was that you are told an idea, right. you're told who brought that idea, you're told how to think about that idea, and then you're just told to, to just go on your way and act out that idea. <laughs> Welcome back to The Great Conversation. The question that's on everybody's minds, should you read the Iliad. That's what we're talking about today. When I first came into the Iliad, uh, I was not necessarily enjoying it right off the bat. And that was, you know, that was my initial impression as we started this whole thing off. Um, but before we dive into all of that, what are you drinking today? We're having some Berkey water. I don't know if y'all have a Berkey filter. We love our Berkey because yes. we've never had such good water mm. before. Cheers. So and people literally come to our house and they're like, can I have some of that incredible can I have Berkey some water? water? <laughs> yeah. Just a filter. It is amazing. So look it up. Berkey. Yeah. We've got the big, we've got the, no, we don't have the Royal Berkey. We have the big Berkey. Yeah. It's a big one. Yeah, we get the big It's kind of funny because Ben has to fill it up and then he like carries it to the stool and we like keep it in our closet. Yeah. It's a whole, it's a whole process. It is a process, but, but it's, it's worth it. Fantastic water. So, so uh, what we're doing here today, if you're new to the Great Conversation, this is our journey through the great books of the Western world. So if you're new to the great books of the Western world, um, and or maybe you're just getting into the Iliad, comment below. Let us know where you're at in the journey. Mm -hmm. We want to have this conversation with us. We've already had about 100 people following along, and it's continuing to grow. And those of you who are part of our community, you guys are awesome. We, we are so grateful that you're joining us on this. So comment below. Yeah, and uh, we're all doing it a little bit differently. Like Ben and I were in. reading from the beginning yep. to the end. We're just going to go straight through. Yeah, there's a few different reading plans. We filmed yeah. a video on that. Yeah. Um, but we're starting at the beginning and just reading through. And uh, we're reading about 10 pages a day. That's our goal right now. Yeah. Uh, so We've got a lot going on in yes, our lives. Yes, but we're doing our best. Okay, so should you read The Is Iliad? Is it worth reading? Is yeah. it worth reading? Yeah, that's what we're really talking about yeah. because we just finished The Iliad. Yes. And it was amazing, overwhelming, Horrifying. <laughs> We learned a lot. And so Ben and I really have had a lot of conversations about how when we close the Iliad, what was our takeaway? And when Ben and I sit down and have a conversation, we think similarly, but this is the way Ben comes to the conversation. Okay, how am I supposed to apply the Iliad? Like what what am I supposed to do with it, Annabelle? I'm, I'm a big like one-liner quote guy. Like I'm looking for a juicy quote yeah, that's whenever gonna, I like, read. This is gonna, gonna change my workflow in my life. Right, that's gonna change your workflow and how yeah. can I make money off of this? How can I how optimize can I... this thought? Yeah, and I, I do think about that a lot. I'm very much like Ben where I want to apply things, but at the same time, I do things sometimes just to enjoy them. Like I'm read on the that. Iliad. I came into the Iliad not thinking, what am I going to get out of this? Other than just, I'm going to read this and I'm going to either enjoy it, I'm going to hate it. How am I going to feel about this? Yes. And I mean, we do that all the time in life. We have, Should I enjoy it? Yeah, we have Should Netflix, we have Disney Plus, we have things that we do just for enjoyment. Yeah. Why would we come to the Iliad and Any think? Any differently. What, how is this going to improve my life or, you know, benefit me? Well, let life? me tell you why I would come but, to the but Iliad it does. like that. It does, yeah. So for me, whenever I read a book, I don't have a ton of time outside of work and, you know, hanging out with family and, and sleeping and, and all the other responsibilities of life. So for me, I'm like, I'm an essentialist in my mind. Like I'm Mr. Optimizer. So I want to come to this and, and see some development in my life through it. And so this past year, I've been trying to like, or past two years, I've been trying to read like, even just like Star Wars. I'm a big Star Wars fan. We've talked about that. And so that's somewhere where I'm pushing myself just to enjoy something more. But for me, when I read something like the Iliad, some more, you know, quote unquote, ancient piece of work, it's hard to understand. It's going to take some struggle. It's going to be frustrating at times. So for me, I'm like, I want to get something out of that. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but one thing I will say is as I was reading through it, I started to enjoy it more. I kind of just put down my guards of trying to learn and she's really helped with that. So on whatever way you're approaching mm -hmm. the Iliad, um, put down your guard. That's kind of like, I think the one thing I yeah. pulled away from it most was that I put down my guard, I started to get more out of it. I started sure. to see the whole narrative of it more. And it really grew. So at first, when I started the Iliad, it made no sense. And maybe you're just starting the Iliad and you're like, oh my gosh, what is going on? I'm dropped in the middle of this huge epic scene and I don't know what's going on. But trust me, it will explain itself out. Right. That's what I found. Right. And that, that gave me, that, I took heart in that. 
And so, you know, we, we kind of want to come to this question, is the Iliad worth reading for you, whether you're just starting, maybe you haven't started and you're thinking about it, or you're yeah. halfway through and you're like, I'm going to put this away. Like, this is not helping me at all. So let's talk about three things cool. that really are us saying to you, yes, we think the Iliad is worth reading. And here's why. And here's why. So I think for one, learning about the culture at that time. So we're talking about 800 BC. Yep. And there was obviously very different thought process of the people, their lifestyle was different. Yep. And these are people telling a story of even their history. So we're even going farther back yeah. in time. Which is why I felt like I just got thrown in the middle of something because you got to remember these people like it's their it's their culture. It's like us talking about Thomas Jefferson or Abraham Lincoln. You would say, "Oh, honest Abe," and you'd immediately know so many things about that idea. Yeah. Yeah, so when they have these different phrases and whatnot, we did have to do some research, but I think so yeah. for point number one. You did more than I did. Right, so for point number one, <clears throat> is it worth reading? Yes, it's worth reading. We learned so much about yes. the gods of the time, yeah. how the gods were a huge part of the thought process and the inner weavings of life in their in in mankind's mind. And it what informed they, how they did life and yes. how they responded to situations. There were so many different cultural, <clears throat> what do you want to call them, ceremonial acts that they yes. did at the time. And so not everything is explained in the Iliad, but it's talked about and then we would kind of go off and do some research so that we could understand it a little bit more. Yeah, we did a video about the Greek gods. So if you, you know, if you're just getting used to you're just getting introduced to our channel, go to the channel. We did a video about the Greek gods. When she did some research about the Greek gods, it helped us understand why a god would respond Certainly. or act in a way that he or she did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so with this idea of the gods really interfering with life mm -hmm. and you know, we're reading a translation into English whereas in the original language in the yeah. original Greek, Greek yeah. there would have been maybe some other ideas that we're not necessarily getting in our language. Yeah. But I do want to read, this is at the end of the book, and Achilles is talking to Priam, and they're talking about Priam lamenting over his son death. You just, and, spoiler alert, you got to say spoiler alert ooh, before you sorry, do something like that. Sorry, maybe we should cut this out. Okay. No, we're good. We're going to keep it rolling, but next time she should say spoiler no, alert. Would I you know, agree? Okay, maybe we should put it, yeah, okay. Keep going. So we're, maybe we'll cut that out. I don't know. Well, so we're on page 301 in our translation. So it's book 24, line 525. Somebody has died. Somebody has died. <laughs> we'll put somebody over that name. And Achilles says to Priam about lamenting over the somebody's death. <laughs> Such is the way the gods spun life for unfortunate mortals, mm -hmm. that we live in unhappiness, but the gods themselves have no sorrows. And then he continues to talk about Zeus and his urns, etc. And Which, as you're reading, let me interrupt, was actually kind of false because we see a ton of sorrow taking place in the story of the gods that the mortals aren't privy to. Well, I would, I I would say call that. it sorrow. I mean, it's more pettiness. They didn't have okay. necessarily sorrow of like, my son died and, and I'm never going to see him again. He never gets to grow up. It was more like favoritism? Yeah, it's okay, just fair yeah, pettiness fair and just fights, I think, but not right. true sorrow. Well, then continue on your point. My okay, apologies. so yeah, so that idea of this, <laughs> this would have been true even in real life outside of this this epic story is that believing that the gods have this perfect life or petty perfect life and we mortals are just down here unhappy having to deal with the sorrow of life of our children yes. dying in war of our children having to go off to war and we don't see them for years to come our young children yeah. being taken away as slaves wives being taken away as slaves yeah and, it was and in their intense. culture that the gods were doing all of this that they were just playing with this and so I think learning that culture, and it's so far removed from what we have to experience yeah. in America here today, yeah. was a learning experience and giving us perspective, I think. Yeah, I think so. And also, like, we talk a lot about in our, our initial introductions to the great books of the Western world, where we're talking about why we're pursuing this and what it means to join the great conversation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, uh, I don't know, I forgot what the word is, and maybe you can help me with this, but we are privileged to have free time to read these books. There's been generations and generations before us that were in survival mode, in a sense. We're farming the land, we're hunting, we're gathering, we're fighting off uh, nomadic tribes. And, you know, we have a great privilege and almost, mm -hmm. as we believe it, a duty 
to read these books. Mm -hmm. And so that perspective, a hundred percent. And it's given us so Mm -hmm. much perspective and we're going to get even more, I believe through, we've we've read one work. We just finished our Mm -hmm. first work and, you know, I'm transitioning into the Odyssey. And so perspective, I think we need more of that in our lives, in my life. Point number two for is the Iliad worth reading is accountability, just really helping you see how much the gods and, well, not the gods, but the mortals really just kind of took their experiences and pinned it on what the gods were wishing. And in essence, that was true because of the narrative that is written here. You see the gods do something and then in essence, the mortals respond to that action. So there's a causation that's happening. But if we think about this as more of a narrative that's been written and not necessarily what was actually happening during the fall of Troy, they were really just pushing off any responsibility. Well, oh well, the gods have acted this way and there's nothing I can do about it. But really like the perspective it gave me is there were some warriors who would say, well, Zeus isn't for me, but I'm going to take action anyway. Mm -hmm. And so it really gave you a clear perspective of people who took action versus people who balked at uh, their responsibility to to take action and, and move forward. And point number three is the Iliad worth reading. This is foundational to the Western culture that we, most of us, live in. So yeah. to really understand a lot of what we go through in life, like again with point number one, perspective, number two with responsibility, and then just bringing it together that this is a work that has informed so much of what we live in today. Yeah. And so reading it especially as you're reading the great books like we said we're going from beginning, beginning to end, end so it's going to inform other books that we read yes and then even just in everyday culture understanding kind of where some of I, our, our ideas are coming from and i mean the gods are kind of in everything i mean greek mythology is really woven yeah. through our culture yeah and absolutely. so that's definitely important to understand where that foundation comes from. Yeah, where where does it all start? And I know that we have not read through uh, the different books to come, but we are anticipating through our research that these books are going to build upon each other. So if we don't start with a strong foundation, we will not know when we land on a previous thought where that thought came from. And it's important to know where a thought comes from because it's important to know the whole thought. The problem that we're seeing with the the deconstruction of liberal education, which we talked about Mm -hmm. in our early episodes, was that you are told an idea, you're told who brought that idea, you're told how to think about that idea, and then you're just told to to just go on your way and act out that idea Mm -hmm. rather than knowing the actual idea and the all the intricate surrounding thoughts of the idea right because so many of these authors sorry i'm not yelling at you i'm just i I get (laughs) excited about this yeah i feel like he's yelling at me a lot oh come on i get excited he does but all the authors that we are going to read in the great conversation i mean it is a guarantee that they had read the iliad yes and so they are going to share thoughts that they're not going to be like this is from the iliad this is where this thought comes from they're just going to have these ideas and we're going to have a previous knowledge of maybe where that came from well just like saying it's the achilles heel of that software product you know that right. comes from the Greek Iliad. Mythology. It comes from Greek mythology. Yeah. It comes from the Iliad, and uh, okay, it doesn't come exactly from the Iliad, but there are references to the Achilles' heel in the Iliad. You'll find them. One thing I want to point out also in that is if you don't read the Iliad, you'll be less prepared for the Odyssey, which oh, in, yeah, which sure. I believe I've heard a lot about. A lot of people love the Odyssey, um, and I'm just getting to know it. I read the first six pages, and immediately there were so many references to characters from the Iliad because it is a continuation. Mm -hmm. And immediately I was just uh, emotionally engaged in the Mm -hmm. Odyssey. This person dies, this person's over here, this person comes down to help and you know why they're helping because you know the character behind that person and how they interact with the mortals, I'm referring to a Greek god. And so it just immediately you're, you're ready for the action that they don't explain. Yeah. And I think that was also a huge thing. I was like, wow, I'm so glad I read the Iliad, even though there were moments where I felt like, oh my gosh, this is dragging on. Yes. And it was difficult for me at times. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I think it will be. I think as we continue these books, there are going to be difficult days. And that is why we have cut out a small number of pages, 10 pages a day. Yeah. We know we can do that. Yep. We've got kids running around. We've got babies growing we've yep. got yes. jobs etc and yeah. i know that you have a lot going on in your 100%. life so don't try to make this huge goal that you do for a week and then next week you you're burn like, out 
oh, I just have a lot going on this week. I can't do it. Like, yeah. I know it sounds ridiculous, 10 pages, but if you can do that, you're going to make it through yeah. because that can go super quick in a reading time and you can definitely fit it in. Yeah. And I mean, she, she reads during nap time for our children. I wake up early and read before I ever even get into my work day, yeah. you know, so find that time that works for you. Maybe you're an evening reader, you know, right, just, right. just find your time. Right. And if you have extra time, read some extra pages. That's what we do. So, totally. so yeah. So bringing this full circle is yep. the Iliad worth reading. Absolutely. Yeah. I definitely think you should dive in, make a small attainable goal yep. and make it through yep. and join us in this great conversation. Yes, comment below. Let us know how things are going and we're excited to uh, hear you, see your guys' comments okay. and talk to you all in the next video. See you later. Bye now.